you're here for our webinar with Miss Burnell Westbrook. Burnell, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Chris. Hi, everybody at home. I'm so happy to be able to come talk to you guys today. So, so tell us how things are in, in your neck of the woods as far as the lockdown and everything else going on. You're, you're in Charlotte, North Carolina. Is that right? Yes, yes I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. So um, things are pretty much like the rest of the country. We're under stay-at-home orders, um, but we're entering phase one tomorrow. So a few stores are going to reopen, so that's kind of exciting. Um, the weather's nice, but, you know, we don't do much more than walk around the neighborhood. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, uh, we'd love to hear from anybody out there um, where you're from, how you're doing, how you're coping with having to stay inside your house for an ungodly amount of time without going out. <laughs> we we are renovating our backyard, which is actually a side yard. So we're, we're we have to have a, 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 a place to just get away. And so we've got an inflatable pool because all the pools are shut down for our kiddos. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, so tell me what's, I, I asked this to Davey last time. What's the weirdest thing you have bought during the lockdown? The weirdest thing I've bought during the lockdown was definitely baby wipes because they were out of Clorox wipes <laughs> and I don't have any children. So that was kind of weird going in that section of the store and buying like a whole basket of baby wipes. Um, but I poured rubbing alcohol in them to disinfect things. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we, we got pretty weird. We, we bought some bidets, and um, so, you know, the, the shortage of toilet paper is real. Um, but I, I, so we've got, we have, we have four, um, four kiddos, and three of them are, are potty trained. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't trust them with their bidet, so we haven't installed it in their bathroom quite yet, because I'm afraid I'm going to walk into, like, just a puddle of water all over the floor. So, uh, anyway, it's, it's fun stuff. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. What are your plans for the weekend? Anything crazy? Nothing crazy. Binge watching Netflix. Nice. <laughs> nice. What, what shows are you into these days? What have you been watching? It's funny. I just restarted Gilmore Girls because I ran out of all the new things. So I was like, it's time to circle back to the classics. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> So the, the I, I guess, a d director or producer of Gilmore Girls mm -hmm. um, also produces one of my favorite shows um, that is called Marvelous Mrs. Maisel on Prime TV. And it's somebody recommended that to me. I'm going to have to add that to my list. I, I would definitely recommend it. Like if you if you have it. Um, watched it yet but uh hey if you're if you're just joining us i see a few people a few more people popping on so glad to have you we're just kind of hanging out um before we get us started officially um but tell me in the con in the comments what's what's your favorite show quarantine show of course tiger king is just fantastic <laughs> um so yeah, like, i believe that's real life <laughs> yeah it's nuts it's nuts i think it it uh it just shows how crazy people actually are and then it forces you to look at yourself and and, and ask like am i am i that crazy like because these people don't realize how crazy they are you know so yeah, yeah they least, think it's completely normal right exactly <laughs> like to have a pet tiger and a mullet and loads of other things so uh Yes, yes. Welcome, Danielle. So excited to have you. I, we are also excited for the webinar with Miss Burnell Westbrook. She is going to be talking about all things branding. Um, it's going to be fantastic. And if you are, are just now joining us, so, so glad that you're here. Um, I, I want to, I wanna, before we get going, just kind of set things up and, uh, and, and talk about what to expect from the webinar um, how we're going to do it, um, and then we'll just dive right into it. So uh, first things first is, you know, realize that um, this experience is going to be a lot different for a lot of different people. So depending on the bandwidth of your internet, where you are, um, you know, it, it, YouTube has a, a really good way of um, making things uh, a little bit less quality if your internet's not all that great. But if something happens in the middle of it, Go ahead and refresh your browser and see if that works. Um, if something explodes on our end and we end up uh, having to uh, shut down the webinar, we will repost whatever it is that we capture 
um, from Burnell. It happened last time. We are crossing our fingers that it doesn't happen this time. We've learned a few secrets on how to keep it from happening. So uh, hopefully that's the case. So the, what we're going to do is we're going to have Burnell just kind of present for the first 20 to 30 minutes. And then she has graciously offered to do a few site reviews to kind of take what she has um, presented and put it into practice in a real practical way. Um, so uh, be looking for that. And also, I'd love to see um, some questions in the comments. Um, and we are going to be you know, gathering those at the end of the webinar and might have some time to answer a few of those. Uh, but it's, it's the thing I love most about live webinars is that we get to answer real questions in real time. And Brunel is a pro. She is a branding expert that hails all the way from Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, she's just fantastic. She's spoken at United. I've gotten the chance to know her and see her work. She's got some work featured in the new edition of the Spark Book coming up. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I'm sorry, Todd, I just did. Um, and so you're going to want to look out for that as it gets released and printed and all the stuff that uh, goes along with that that's happening. So, um, Brunel, so excited to have you and, uh, and, and so excited to hear what you have to say uh, about branding and h how to, you know, make sure that when the economy opens back up, you are positioned in such a way to just take off the, in, in the best way possible. Yes. yes. Chris, Chris thank, thank you. you. That was such a wonderful introduction. I also have everybody's comments pulled up on another screen. So if you see me looking back and forth, um, hi guys, I see more people are joining in here. So we're going to dive right in. Um, I definitely want this to be workshop style. You gain the most out of honestly the question that you ask. That's the answer that you're going to remember. Um, so feel free to pop your questions in the comments. I'm going to be just kind of looking back and forth as we go. If I don't cover your question um, right when you put it, I'll try to review all the questions at the end as well. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you guys. Can everybody see that? How to build a brand that recovers quickly after the lockdown. Yes, that is what is on the minds of everybody right now. How many people's states are beginning to reopen? You can put them in the comments if your state is getting ready to reopen. I see there's a little bit of delay on YouTube, so I don't know if you guys can see my slide up yet. Um, and someone mentioned they're hearing an echo, so we're gonna work on that. <laughs> as well awesome hello from denmark oh my goodness new york arizona wonderful all right so let's dive into how to build a brand that recovers quickly after the lockdown so the key to knowing why something is important we have to understand what it is and what it's capable of doing so we're gonna dig a little bit into what is branding how many people think branding is just the logo can I see a show of hands, even though I can't see your hand? Yeah, a lot of people think the branding is a logo. But what your branding really is, is a bit your business experience. It's how the customer feels and what they think of you when they come in contact with any piece of your business. So we're talking social media, um, your logo, printed materials, Facebook ads, your website. You get the point. <laughs> it's all of... Um, the things that you use to attract people to your business. Yes, I'm seeing some of the comments popping up over here. Um, and why that's so important is because people do not care what you know until they know that you care. And that's so true, especially in these times now, your target client is facing so many new trials and so many new um, experiences that none of us have been through. Um, so they truly want to know that you're, that you care, that you're here for them. So with that, we're going to dive right in to the four fundamentals of branding. Um, I believe that a brand is built on pillars. And so if you have a good foundation, then we can build upon that. So we're going to dive right into that. Checking your comments. Wonderful. So the first pillar of branding is your core values. So you want to define your core values. Tell us what you stand for. 
Your brand values give off certain tones and messaging, and that's what needs to be reflected in your branding. So are you on Instagram sharing with people how you're spending this time? Are you um, explaining to them what your why is? What is your motivating factor? And then after we recover from this lockdown, um, you may be beginning to grow a team. So you want to use those core values to help create that company culture. So three quick ways to do that is to look at your own personal values. There may be some overlap in there. And then you also want to compare positive life experiences and negative life experiences, um, because then you can see what made certain things work and then why other things weren't working. Any questions on that so far? All right, awesome. So you want to solidify your vision. That is the second brand pillar that we're gonna talk about. And we have our little light bulb just going on over there. So who is your target client? We've talked a lot about target clients in the past, um, but you really should know who you're aiming to reach. Once you have that target client in mind, what is the big thought that you want to leave them with? So if you had to just choose one thing to leave that client with, whether they come in contact with your Instagram, with your Facebook, with your email list, what is that? And then how will you convey that to the world? How do you convey that big idea to people? So these are the framework questions that you want to use for your brand vision. And once you solidify your vision, then you're ready to share that with the world. And that brings us to our third point, the voice. And yes, I see in the comments, someone asked the question, will the slides be available to download later? Um, so I was not planning on that, but yes, I can share these slides with everyone afterwards. Um, and we'll probably send that out in an email. So I'll make sure to get you guys email at the end. That was an excellent question over there. So the third pillar of branding is your voice. We hear a lot about we're in a saturated market. There's so many other people doing what I'm doing. But as a creative entrepreneur, your business is your personal brand. Your ultimate goal is to make genuine connections with people on an individual level. I'm going to repeat that. You want to make genuine connections with people on an individual level. So let's do a little exercise where we take the word branding out of our vocabulary for a moment. And let's just start thinking of it as experience building. So when you ask the question, is your Instagram on brand, you could ask, is my Instagram building an experience? When you ask, how do I get my website more cohesive and more branded? You can ask, how do I convey the experience of working with me through all the pages of my website? And so when you tell your story through your work, people are able to find pieces of you that they can relate to. We all have something that's relatable to someone else. And so then when people feel your story, they become a part of your audience. I know it's really easy to highlight the successes and the wins. I know a lot of us use social media and our portfolios as our highlight reel, but we want to um, also share some of those vulnerable moments. Let's face it. Those are the moments that really make for the most inspirational stories. So don't get too lost in the details. What I've done on the next slide here is put together three ways to keep your story simple and memorable. Number one, you want to identify the problem. So when you tell the story of how you came into business, tell people what you were facing. So if it was that you were struggling to find a job and so you created this business or you were having issues bringing in clients through your website, so you created a course on how to bring in clients to your website. Identify that problem for people. And then second, talk about the process. So explain to them the steps that you took in order to alleviate that problem in your journey in business. And then third, share proof. That's where your portfolio comes in, your testimonials. You can share some statistics about how your business has grown. And so all of those are three excellent ways to utilize your about page. So our fourth branding pillar is the visuals. Yes, that's the part that everybody likes. 
um, the pretty things. But we want to make sure that these pretty things are pretty with a purpose. Um, and so I've jotted down a quick list of essential visual components. And this downtime that we have now um, due to COVID-19 is a wonderful time to really make sure you have every visual component on this list. There's more things that you can have for your brand, of course, but these are the essentials. This is the toolkit that you need when you're able to reopen and um, resume life as normal. So that's your color palette. Um, I suggest that you have three to five colors. You can have more, um, but keeping three to five colors really keeps things cohesive and really makes your brand recognizable to people. You want to have cohesive fonts, um, making sure that across platforms you're using the same kind of typography, the same type of messaging to people, and they'll become more comfortable with seeing you and they'll recognize that, oh, that's so-and-so's photography business. You, of course, want to have a primary logo, um, and then in a lot of cases, a secondary logo, submark, or watermark are excellent for just reinforcing that brand recognition because you want to come out of this with people knowing exactly what you do. Even if they're not in a position to book with you at that moment, you want them to know, oh, hey, that floral element over there, I know who that is. That's the photographer from San Francisco. So you really want to make sure that your secondary logo, submark, or watermark is cohesive with that primary logo. Also, you want to make sure that you have great brand photography. I know it's really hard to get new photos done in quarantine, but just add that to your list of things to do because that goes a long way with adding things on your website as well and keeping that pretty visual appearance, but also an intentional visual appearance. So just a quick exercise that everybody can do, scroll through your website, scroll through your Instagram, um, and it may be beautiful, but ask yourself, what is the story behind each of these elements and what do I want my customer to do when they see it? If you don't have a purpose, then it may be pretty without a purpose and you may want to think about um, tweaking that a little bit. Yes. So these, do you have brands that consistently attract you? <laughs> I, instantly, I know everybody's looking at, oh, the Frappuccino from Starbucks or Target or how we love our iPhones and MacBooks and things from Apple. When you see these brands or when you see their ad, it really does stop your scroll. And you're like, yes, oh my goodness, yes, I need that. Um, that's not by coincidence, guys. And you have that power and ability in your business as well to create just an iconic, very simple um, brand strategy that people will recognize, trust, and grow to love. So I know that was pretty quick, but those are the four fundamentals of branding. So we've covered the why and we've covered your basics and your fundamentals. So let's get down to your action plan because that's what we're all here for, right? We want to be profitable when this thing reopens. So I ask you, are you serving your clients new needs? Stop and think about that and ask yourself, are you serving your clients new needs? If so, what are some of the ways that you're doing that? I'm going to wait a second to see some of the ways that you're doing that in the comments. All right, so as that's loading, one of the things that I'm doing to serve my clients' new needs are webinars, um, go, getting on and being guest speakers on different podcasts, just going on Instagram Live, making sure that I'm really showing my face and showing up um, to let my clients know that we will be here when they reopen. So that's one of the ways that I'm serving my clients' new needs. Four months ago, who would have thought that car companies of all people, would be manufacturing N95 masks. I mean, four months ago, how many of us had heard of N95 masks? Um, but what happened was that when circumstances changed, these companies used the tools that they already had in place to then pivot, to then serve the industry's new needs. So what does that mean for you? <laughs> no, I'm not telling you to go out and start making masks, um, but rather to look in your personal toolbox, to look at the tools that you already have and see how you can serve your clients new needs with the tools that you already have in place while staying true to your brand. 
Let's see. Yes. So Georgina put in the comments that she's providing tutorials for newborn photos. That is awesome. Yes. There's a lot of worried um, pregnant women out there right now. Let's see. Beautiful Creations mentioned that she's doing at home weddings. That's an excellent way to pivot your business. Um, and just kind of growing on that, for instance, if you're a wedding photographer, can you offer a package for smaller weddings? Could you team up with other local vendors, possibly a videographer, to offer Zoom services or Skype ceremonies to help people know that they'll be able to stream their special moments um, with their family members or any guests that may feel or may not feel comfortable traveling. And we, we're doing that now in quarantine, but as things begin to reopen, it's gonna be a while before um, things go back to normal or this new normal, as we say. So maybe instituting a package like that for the long run or for the foreseeable future is definitely an add-on um, that would serve your clients' new needs. And even um, to just kind of calm some of the concerns of your brides who have weddings months away. What about shop owners or people who sell physical products? Do we have any of those on the webinar today? Awesome. Yes. So as a shop owner, could you offer maybe a bundle and save package where people can order more and maybe receive some sort of discount? Or if you're not discounting things, you could just insert a simple card that explains how this product maybe would help them work from home or um, how they could entertain their children at home. Just something creative that maybe they hadn't thought of. That way they feel that you're serving them and they'll continue buying things from you because you're giving pieces of value. Um, Another example, if you're an influencer, or you have a course, or you sell digital products or podcasts or whatever the case may be, could you um, share the tips to help you stay connected with your audience? I'm sure many of your clients are probably struggling with building an online presence at the moment, and sharing that expertise could be just one more added way that you're serving their new needs, um, and that when they are in a position, they'll be ready to buy from you. So the point is, no matter what industry you're in, I can guarantee you all of two things, that all of your clients, mine included, are looking for inspiration and education. So is there something that you could share to inspire and uplift someone today? And then also something that you could share to teach someone something. We're all experts in something. Um, and so by utilizing those skills to really um, share your expertise, will really reinforce that trust factor with your potential clients. And in most cases, you have both of those tools already in your toolbox and using them won't cost you any extra money. So what I've created here is a customer journey map. Um, just another visual way to really show you guys how you can um, you know, connect with those clients and get your brand ready for success as soon as things open up. I see there's a little lag um, in comments. Yes, so I see that um, Kendra mentioned that she's teaching Facebook ads. I've personally used those and they're really successful. Um, Alicia mentioned virtual apps, uh, virtual yoga classes. So that's something that's on the minds of a lot of people too, sharing something that can kind of relieve their stress. So jumping into this customer journey map here, we see that finding and booking your target client happens way before they enter your website. Although we really want your website to be the place that you can convert them. Um, so I put four touch points at the bottom where you want to attract, engage, convert, and reflect. And so the goal of this is to evoke positive emotions at each step of the journey. So let's take attract. Some of the ways that you can attract your clients are through social media, um, through networking, through Facebook groups. Um, we always wanna stay above the baseline. So above the baseline to attract your clients would be cohesive visuals. Going back to those things we talked about with your website, with your brand um, submarks, with your logos, with your color schemes. That's something you can do to go above the baseline. That's something that's putting you, um, that's helping you stand out 
in the market. One of the things that could put you below the baseline, unfortunately, that I see a lot of people doing is vague messaging. So if people read your messaging or read your call to action and they don't know what action they're supposed to take, um, then that's not going to attract them to you, unfortunately. And that's not the goal. Because once you attract them and once you get them on your website, you want to engage, engage, engage. Yes. So how do you do that? Um, above that baseline ways of engaging, using a friendly tone, being positive. One of the tips that I use when writing my website content is I try to smile and I try to say it out loud. It's really, really hard to sound boring when you're smiling. So if you're energetic and you're writing that, hey, we're here to help this new package or hey did you know we already had this package that suits um the needs that you now find yourself post pandemic um then those exciting very warm caring words are things that will draw people in and then you always want to provide valuable free content freebies are awesome everybody loves things for free and especially if you're providing valuable content then you're already driving home that like no trust factor instantly when they get on your website. One of the things um, that you want to avoid doing that kind of puts you below the baseline is having an outdated portfolio. That's another thing. Use this time. I know you guys have been doing excellent work coming up to, to now before we all got stuck in our houses in our pajamas. Um, but everything that you were doing before that, use this time to get that updated on your portfolio. Um, you can even create blog posts to explain to people what what that portfolio item is about using language and using pictures that really evoke emotions you want to evoke those positive emotions everybody's getting bombarded with negative energy so if your website is the one that gives them some positive energy i guarantee you they will make it past your home page and onto your services page um, another way to engage with people on that services page is using words like you and your. You really want to speak to your target client. You want them to feel like I'm talking to you, Susie. Um, I want you to know that I know what you're going through and I offer a service that's going to help with that. Um, another way to do that on your about page is having an image of you. I see a lot of people that don't have images of themselves on their website. I know it's really hard sometimes to come from behind the camera to in front of it, but you want to make sure that people know who you are. Um, uh, some other things to keep you above the baseline on your website is the use of white space. You want to make sure that um, it's easy to follow along, that it's clear, it's concise. Um, and your information is not getting crowded in the background. So great, they've engaged, you've engaged on your website, you've done all this work. Now they, you wanna convert them. You wanna have that call to action that they respond to. Once you do that, another great way to stay above the baseline, because that's the goal here, is to send them to a thank you page. You want to let them know that you appreciate them interacting with you and that you're going to be in touch with them in the future. And then as they move into the reflection stage, they've booked you, they've worked with you, you provided an excellent service, as I know you did. Um, and then you can reach back out for testimonials and really sharing that social proof. So that so that's the area where you can kind of ask for feedback. It not only helps you learn things to tweak in the process, but also to share with others that you have this service that benefited someone. So this copy of this customer journey map um, will be available to you. I'll have a link in the comments for all of these items. But you just want to make sure that all times you're staying above the baseline. And the time to work on that is now. Um, don't wait to things reopen. This is a great time um, to make sure that your business is checking off each of those bullet points above the baseline. And if you see a bullet point that resonates with you that's below the baseline, um, now's a great time to work on that. Um, so that we can make sure that you're ready for success. So back to our agenda, we've covered the why, we've covered the four fundamentals, and we've covered the action plan. So now let's talk about what, <laughs> every, what gets everybody's attention, the freebie. Yes, some of the best things in life are freebies. I wholeheartedly believe that. 
Um, so I have created this wonderful PDF for you guys. I love it. I really did um, pour a lot of time and attention into this. It's the Branding Fundamentals, a guide to building a profitable brand. This is the same strategy that I use with all of my clients. This is what we talk about on those great strategy conversations when we brainstorm. So inside of this PDF, you get a deeper look into the components of building a profitable brand. Um, there's a finding your ideal client worksheet in there that I personally use every time I'm getting ready to launch a new service or anytime I'm getting ready to run a new ad or run some kind of promotion. I go back to the finding your ideal client worksheet because there um, I can just make sure that it would resonate with them. And then there's also a profitable pre-launch checklist in there. So there's some good on that checklist as well. There's some extra things, but I'm not going to spoil that for you because I want you to download it. Um, and so you'll see some of the things that are on that checklist and there's also some other freebies in there as well. So with that being said, I can't wait to see how your brand transforms and adapts to the world post pandemic. And what we're going to do, um, a couple of you graciously added um, your URLs because you wanted to do some Facebook reviews. So I'm going to, or not Facebook, I'm sorry, some website reviews. So I am going to walk you through the two websites that I chose. Um, I'm going to leave this slide up for a moment so that you guys can grab my email address because if you have any questions, um, any comments, or I don't get a chance to review your website today, I definitely want to hear from you. <laughs> We're in quarantine, so I definitely um, will be taking the next few days really trying to communicate with you guys um, and make sure that we're getting those questions answered because I really want everybody to be above the baseline <laughs> when things reopen. I'm going to catch up for a second on your comments over here, make sure that I'm answering any questions before we jump inside those website reviews. So I'm going to read those comments for a second. Let's see what we got. <laughs> Someone said extremely random, but what software did you create your presentation? Kiana, this is a keynote presentation. Um, you're so welcome, Danielle. I'm glad you're finding some valuable gems in this, as well as beautiful creations. Um, I'm so glad you guys are enjoying this and Dealey Maley as well. Um, I would love for you guys to put what industries you're in in the comments. That would be great if you could tell me what industries you're in because there's always some industry specific tips that we can offer for websites as well. Um, Kevin, I will be putting the link um, to my resources page in the comments momentarily so that you are able to grab the freebies. All right, so let's transition over you guys to these website reviews. Awesome. So the first website that we're reviewing is Ro Ruby Road Live. Ruby Road, are you in here? Are you in the chat? I'll wait for your comment. Awesome. So what we have here is a one page website where it's scrolling. We see that she has a home section about the braving section, which um, is being used, it seems like, as a Instagram link currently or a portfolio. Um, we learn a little bit about the tribe and the offerings there. And then there is a contact and um, separate page out for the blog there where we can read some of her recent musings. So Ruby, one of the great things that I wanted to start with on your website that I loved was your use of white space. It is very, very clear um, that you have some great information in there and that you know, you're keeping it very, very organized. Some tips though that I wanted to suggest was an overall summary of what you do. Going back to those branding fundamentals that we talked about, one of the really important ones is your brand voice. You wanna make sure that people know exactly what you're offering um, and exactly how to benefit from it. So I would suggest somewhere at the top, maybe an, above your beautiful slideshow or below your beautiful slideshow, just to give a little welcome message about what, you, what it is that you offer. 
and what it is that you're going to do that's going to serve them and that they're going to benefit from because that's the ultimate goal you want them to book with you great use of your about section with adding a picture and a story about yourself as well one of the other suggestions I would have here is some sort of call to action in addition to read more. Because some people may read just this snippet and be ready to talk to you. So I would suggest adding a secondary call to action, whether it's looking over your portfolio or see what services we offer or clicking on um, latest blog post. I would just have a secondary call to action there. Your braving section is great. Excellent thing here, social proof. I can't stress that enough, sharing testimonials on your website. I literally read reviews before I do anything. Um, and it's usually not for a huge service. So if you guys are selling some large package, some large service, people are definitely gonna be reading reviews about you and you wanna put your best. Um, I know it's sometimes hard to brag about yourself, so let other people brag on you is a great way to go. Um, just a little pro tip here, I would suggest carrying those testimonials out through different areas of the website as well. Not just having them on your homepage or your service page, but putting them in different places. So that's great. Um, I love that you have your offerings here, but I would like to see a, another call to action again. Um, I see that you have your starter course and things of that nature, but unless I hover, I wouldn't know to click on that. So definitely adding a little button down here that says learn more or I'm in or I'm ready, something of that nature would definitely let them know like, oh, okay, this is, this is my time to click on something. Awesome. Um, and then of course at the bottom, you have your contact information, which which is great, and then ready to reimagine your performance in Stage Center, which is also an excellent call to action. So you can repurpose the same call to action and put it somewhere higher on your website. I think that would really help um, increase the conversion rates as well. Another thing is giving away that valuable content. I can't stress that enough. Having a lead magnet on here would be excellent. So if you have any kind of tool or education piece or quick little PDF um, that you could put together for people. Remember, you have the know-how. You are the expert in your field. So that'd be great if you just put that together and put a little call to action, maybe in between your braving section and your about, or you could put it underneath your braving section, but above your testimonial. And that freebie then would also allow you to capture their information and give you some basis to follow up um, with viewers. So that's another great Great way using that lead magnet to convert viewers into actual paying customers. Wow, I'm checking out the comments. We have so many wedding photographers in here. That is awesome. That is awesome. Um, and so it, it's great because the next website that we are going to review is actually the Northfolk Wedding Films and Photography. So this might be a website that a lot of you can jot down notes um, and try little tips and tricks to add to your website. So we land here, we see a beautiful logo at the top, um, beautiful branding elements, kind of have the watercolor going on in the background. It's still a lot of white space, so very clean and cohesive in there. Um, one of the first things that jumps out at me though is the pricing. Um, and you know, having your pricing on your website is great. You definitely want to provide people with that information, but you want to put the pricing below the value. Like you want to put the pricing position, um, below where you show them the value first. So I would swap where you have those two things. I would put your opening gallery because your images are beautiful. Um, they're emotion evoking. You, you look at those and you're like, wow, I, I really want to have that experience with Northfolk Wedding Films. Um, and so then they scroll down and they can see a little bit more about the pricing below that. Um, so I would definitely reel them in before I show them the packages. Another thing that I would add to your homepage um, would be testimonials. I know that there's some testimonials in other places on this website, but just really having the testimonials up where you have your photos and your galleries um, would really just add extra pieces of value 
before they see your package because you want to make sure that once you offer them this excellent photo and video package that they're ready to click that most of their questions have been answered by the time they they follow through your call to action um beautiful use of galleries here and also your wedding film that's excellent because those are two services that you offer so having those back to back is great on your home page um as well as who you're trusted by. That's another great way to instill um, that trustworthy um, feeling, that trustworthy emotion with your with people coming in contact with your website. So I love that. Having a trusted wedding vendor section is great. And then as you scroll down, you have your contact at the bottom too. I would suggest making your inquire for booking um, and availability just a little bit larger um, because that's an excellent that's an excellent call to action piece that you have there. And I just don't want people to miss that um, because that's what they're here for. You want them to inquire for booking and availability. So you want to make sure that the action that you want people to take um, is clear is clear to them. <laughs> that should be very, very visible. Um, also at the bottom, geotagging is great. Having where you're located um, is excellent for SEO purposes. Um, if you're trying to get brides or clients in that area. So that's really good. Um, great utilization of your footer down there. So as we scroll back up, this is a multi-page website. So it's a little different than the first website that we showed you guys. Um, and show it has so many awesome um, templates and options for multi-page websites as well. So we see that the about page is being utilized very well with a picture um, as well as a little bit about your story and then an excellent branding video there. One of the things that I would suggest underneath your branding video um, to just kind of break up the page flow would be some sort of call to action for them to view your galleries or view your latest blog post or to contact you um, just so that people know that we're transitioning out of um, who you are and entering the next phase of your website because I know at the bottom we have a little bit of your work there. Excellent use of fun facts. Um, I think that is great to have on your website, just something that shows your personality. You really want your website to let people feel like they've met you um, so that when they call you, they already know who they're going to be working with. So a good use of fun facts. And then I see we have some testimonials there as well. So if we could carry out that same cohesive testimonial section and just put that on different pages of your website, um, that's just reinforcing social proof even more. I wanted to show you guys the investment page um, because I thought that this was excellent showing images um, in connection with the investment. I think it's really, really good to show people your work, show them your value, show them um, what they're getting before you show them the package. So that's excellent there. Um, and then just having another button here to contact you would be really good because then you could streamline those inquiries as well. But overall, really great website. Um, another way that I see on here that you could be driving more traffic to is just running your Instagram feed. You, whether you put it in your footer is a great place to put it. You could put it on your blog in the sidebar. Um, but just running what you're doing on other social media platforms because that way that when people click off of your website, they're still coming in contact with your brand information. So you don't want them to leave your website. You kind of want people to stay in a loop there. Um, so that was the review of the Norfolk wedding films. Um, check in my questions. Sorry, guys, I didn't check the questions. Yes, yeah, so I see we have some wedding venues in here as well as a copywriter. Awesome. Oh, so pro, oh, pro social digital agency. You mentioned that you're pivoting to online business management, currently getting certified to help businesses manage strategy systems and automations. That is excellent. Um, so on your website, I hope that you have that, um, synopsis at the top. I'm checking out some more comments here. Ashley, congratulations. You just made the switch to show it. So that's awesome. Can't wait for your site to go live. That is excellent. We can't wait to see that either. 
Ed, you're a wedding pianist. That is awesome. We have a branding photographer in here. Very good. Awesome. So we, we are, are going, going to switch, switch over, over to a Q and A Q &A session. <laughs> yeah, Brunel, thank you so much. That's such such great information, and um, lo love the fact that we're we're just going to take a second and and just do some question and answer. Um, so if if you have a question that's been burning in your mind about branding, about uh, your website, or even if you're pivoting uh, going into this new season. Um, let us know in the comments. We'd, we'd love to hear that. But Brunel, you just recently went through a rebrand yourself. Um, and I'd, I'd love it if you could just kind of walk us through the process that you took um, from start to finish. I mean, as, as confined or as you know, compressed as you want it to be. But what was that like? And, and what were you thinking when you were in the middle of doing all that? Yes. <laughs> so I just went through a rebrand and that was um, a very interesting experience to be on the client side <laughs> um, of how things work. So what led to the rebrand re was just really seeing um, that I wanted to better serve my clients needs. Um, I realized that a lot of the people that were coming to me were coming for rebrands. So originally I had created packages that were more geared to people who were starting um their journey as business owners but what i found was i was actually attracting a lot of like seasoned people who were in business for 5 10 15 years um so i wanted my rebrand to more so show or reflect that um that season of change that season of growth so we're going from not so much starting a business but more so making it sustainable and and keeping it going um, so what that looked like was I, I changed my colors. I started from the very beginning. Um, so a lot of research went into that as well as just color theory, um, typography that would really speak to people who were more a little bit more established, just really staying away from the trendy things um, and going more with like the timeless fonts, um, things that were super legible, super clear. And then I took a really minimal approach to it. I like to call it minimalish because there's a little bit of pizzazz in there. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of how the branding side of that went. For as far as the web design went, I literally went through and got rid of everything that wasn't needed. <laughs> if it wasn't intentional, it was a purge. I just got rid of it. Um, so now when you go to my website, there's clear call to actions on every page. Um, if it speaks to you, you know exactly where to hit. Um, and then it sends them through that flow. One of the big parts, too, of this rebrand or redesign of the website was reconfiguring my portfolio. That was a huge piece for me. Now, if you go on my portfolio, you see real people. <laughs> you see the um, you see the actual business owner versus just the project. Um, and I ran it past all my clients. I was like, you guys, I really want to show your faces. Um, but I, I added that in there because it, it humanized the whole process. It shows you that we're not just working with businesses, but we're working with real people. We're changing real people's lives. Yeah, that's awesome. We've got a great question here from Carla, and she says, I, I, I ph photograph different niches and don't know how to brand my website without it looking cluttered. So how does she promote each of those niches without being confusing uh, to her ideal client? Yes. Excellent question, Carla. So my biggest suggestion would be to find the common thread, find the common ground between all of your niches, whether that is um, your approach to shooting or your specific process or your specific experience, but find the common thread. And then that's what you put on your home page and then you add a section that they can break off to the different sections that apply to them so then they can look at what you do for portraits what you do for weddings what you do for sports but there has to be a common theme for all of them i hope that answered your question you can put in there if that didn't fully answer the question <laughs> yeah that's great and and i love i, I love the idea of your brand kind of growing and changing as you grow and change and as your clients grow and change and it sounds like that's what you kind of figured out 
whenever you were going through your rebranding that, you, you know, who you were serving at first was kind of starting to mature. So I, I wonder, especially now, because I think we're going to come out of this thing and the world is going to look incredibly different for who knows how long. So what are some things that people might be able to look for as far as how to pivot, even if it's not a complete pivot from, you know, I did wedding photography to now I'm a course creator to now I'm doing Facebook ads or whatever. But what are some slight things that people might be able to pivot to or look for as they're just kind of figuring out what the next step is for them and their brand? Definitely. One of the key ways to do that, honestly, is to listen. Just going back to that fundamental skill of listening to what your clients are saying. So send out emails and check with them. See how they're doing during the pandemic. Is there anything that has changed? And just listen to their feedback. So, for instance, um, I'm working with a photographer now who mentioned that a lot of her clients are concerned about their weddings. So, or what they're, what that will even look like a year from now. So one of the things you can do to kind of pivot for that, as I mentioned earlier, is to make a smaller package or not even just making a smaller package, but offering as just an add on, um, that you will have a streaming service or that there are now these upgrades that you offer that people, you know, will make them feel comfortable with the situation because everybody's kind of in an uncomfortable place right now. Right. Yeah, that's great. So here's another great uh, question from Kelsey. She says, how do you suggest keeping the aesthetic of the site cohesive when most of our photos come from different photographers while showing off our venue? So this is a venue owner who is using photographs from different uh, photographers with different styles. What would you suggest to Kelsey? Excellent, Kelsey. So if you could, I would suggest putting the same photographer's photos on the same page. So if you have one featured wedding there on your homepage, another featured wedding on your about page. So at least the photos that are near each other um, are from the same photographer and have the same editing style. And then just really utilizing your portfolio page where people can view all of the photos inside of a gallery. Yeah, that's great. And, and I think you know, there's some great things you can do with color and imagery and weaving that into the photographs as well that I think can kind of keep a uh, cohesiveness to the site. Um, Julie's asking, how do we get the PDF? So we're going to link that in our comments and you will also get a follow up email um, if you signed up, if you registered for the webinar today. Um, Brunel, I, I'd, I'd love it if you talk about uh, color theory a little bit because you mentioned that when you were going through your rebrand and I think it's, it's something that is so ethereal and, and kind of takes a long time to process through. So how do you look at color theory and, and what do you suggest with your clients when they're choosing a color palette for their brand and their website? Yes. So I take a very like emotive approach to color theory. So I like to like combine colors and emotions. Yes. So when you see something bright yellow, you think very exciting. You it, it instantly makes you super happy, very energetic, very youthful. Um, versus like when you see sage or calm blues, then you're thinking more relaxing, more wellness, um, things of that nature, more meditation. With my colors, I went with a burnt orange, a soft blush pink, and um, a, more of a neutral kind of like taupe color, which don't sound like they go together. Um, but if you go to my website, they do. And the thought process with that was um, that I was going for something a little bit more traditional, something um, a little bit more timeless. And then with the blush, I do um, specifically market it to female entrepreneurs, even though I work with everyone that's more so my target market. Um, so just by kind of weaving that color in, it softened the other two colors. Um, and so that was the theory that I went with when I chose my colors. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's great, great insight. Uh, I wonder too, you know, taking it outside of the web browser, right? You know, cause your brand, like you mentioned, is something that it, it starts well before anybody even thinks about uh, interacting with you. So how, how can you carry your brand into different things like um, the webinars that you're doing or the courses that you're creating or your Instagram account or uh, whatever it is, any point of connection, like what are some things that you can do to be intentional about making sure that your brand is consistent in everything that you're putting out to the world? 
Yes. So a great tip that I would suggest, um, whether you're using Canva or Photoshop or whatever um, graphic creating platform you're using, there's a little six digit code called a hex code. Um, and what that does is helps you find the, the exact color that you're using. So create a note or put in your notepad or your phone or whatever, all of the hex codes that you use for your brand. It should be three to five of those. Um, and then just making sure that you're using that exact code on each platform. And so that will keep your colors identical. Um, another thing is just in your tone or in your voice, making sure that you sound like yourself on every platform. So that um, just start this, the opening sentence, people will be able to recognize who you are. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, Brunel, I, I can't thank you enough for being on this live workshop today. Um, and we've, we've gotten just some great feedback from people. You, you actually have quite a few super fans who have been cheering you on in the comments. I don't know if you've been able to see that, but uh, everybody has just loved what you had to say. So one more time, where, where can people connect with you um, outside of the webinar? Yes. So my website is brandedbybrown.com, but the true connection is Instagram. That's, I jump in there. I answer all my DMs personally. I manage my social media myself. So you'll be able to talk to me one-on-one -on -one in there. Um, and that's Branded by Brunel. That's awesome. Great. And you are going to be giving away the freebies. You're going to link that in the comments. And then we'll also send a yeah. replay video out to everybody from Show It as well. So um, yeah, thank you all so much for coming today. We are going to be doing a few more webinars this month. Um, so we've got um, Paige Griffith, who's going to be talking about contracts um, coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, and we've, we've got Chip Desard, who's going to be talking about live streaming coming up at the end of the month. So just some fantastic other presenters. But Again, so glad that you've all been here with us today. Uh, hope you're all staying safe, and we hope to see you soon. And again, Brunel, thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you so much for having me. Stay safe, guys. Bye, everybody.